Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder and aboard the M1A2 Abrams. And this is now the end of the line American main battle tank, battle rating 10.3, which it shares alongside a lot of the capabilities with its more or less predecessor, the M1A1. And so I have two battles for you, and the question is in both of them, do you like what you see? Now, both are slightly edited, so to shorten out the, you know, downtimes where there is just not all that much actions to fit it in a reasonable time. You saw a little bit of the taste in the intro, and this is what I want to just expand on. So what is the difference between this tank and also its predecessor, the M1A1? Well, the horsepower to ton ratio actually goes down from just above 26.5 to just below 25. That's not the world's greatest difference but you know there is a little bit difference then the tank is therefore a little bit slow in acceleration top speed and reverse speed are the same you have two shells more capacity so it goes up from 40 to 42 rounds and then you have as an additional shell type this thing and this is what i want to talk about because it's oh so beautiful and this is a shell type that i think every main battle tank should have available in war thunder what I'm talking here about is the main difference between this tank and the M1A1 Abrams. It is the M830A1 heat FS round. It has only 350 millimeters of penetration. This is significantly less than the original stock heat FS, the M830, with 480 millimeters. So 130 millimeters less. But not just only does the mass velocity go up from 1140 meters per second, but you then have 1410 meters per second and also the fuse changes. So it's still a heat FS round with all the penetration and the bursting parameters. But it has a proximity fuse shell. And this is what made the kill on the KF-50 so nice. Now, at first glance, you might be, wow, this is what I need to revenge kill all the KF-50s. Well, not quite, because, you know, the rangefinder goes only to four and a half kilometers. And beyond that, to actually hit something is difficult and I think that the shell doesn't even travel all that far. So that was the first battle, it was quick, it was fast and it was nice to watch and this was then the first good battle that I had. The second one is here this night battle on Ash River and I'm using here the replay since despite me having recorded the original, first of all you couldn't see all that much and so here we have the advantage of the markers so this is not arcade. This is just a replay feature that I can use to also show the markers of the enemy team whenever I feel like it here in the replay. Um, sadly not in battle though. And this will be the most successful battle so far. And again, I cheaped out a little bit on this tank. You know, the reload can be 6 seconds because if you then have a fully trained ace crew, you have the maximum reload. But for me, without any sort of ace or even expert crew, which saved me a million silver lines, I have roughly 7 seconds, 6.9 to be exact. And that cost me in my life here and there, especially when the commander was knocked out and then the replay got longer. So this is quite something. Again, you have the same engine, you have the same armor, the same internal layout and crew layout as your predecessor. That means also the same weaknesses, the same weak spots, more or less like any other main battle tank in War Thunder at this battle rating. Because, yeah, for all intents and purposes, gun breach, turret ring, lower plate. That's just how it ro rocks and rolls. Rock and rolls. English is difficult today. So while I think that this shell is not the most awesome game changer ever, I think that every tank should have it. Yes, there is the question of historical accuracy, but when we have the discussion of helicopters, you have to see it like this. The Edit is a better tank destroyer than this, and it's certainly a better SPA, you know, a higher rate of fire, an additional 25mm cannon, um, then a tandem heat FS warheads, also with proximity fuse, 10 kilometer range, radar, better gun elevation, the Edits is just a better, you know, SPA, although it actually not being titled as such, which is then funny if you look at all the other SPA in the game. Japan, for instance, they don't even have such a thing like a SAM. 
So this is probably the best counter lineup that you have for the KF50. Now you know that something is wrong when we discuss mostly about the KF50 and uh, how to counter it when you know this is all about tank RP. So let's discuss here the tank. So again the top speed is fairly nice with what is it uh, 72 kilometers per hour forward and in reverse you know it's still 41. So this is pretty great. No actually it's 68 kilometers per hour forward. And you have a 1590 horsepower strong gas turbine. That really rocks as well. But again the weight has gone up to 61.7 tons from the original 57.2 tons. And you noticed this. The next thing is, as I said, I was cheaping out with the expert crew qualification. Again, it saves me over 1 million civil lines. Why is this important? Because as much as I have really liked this tank when I played it, I don't play it all that much, which is a little bit of a contrast to the normal people that will grind this. So here is my verdict. I don't really think that this tank is worth it, although if you get it, at least you have a little bit of a difference when you look at the difference between the Type 90 and the Type 90B, which are the same tanks. So here you get a little bit of a bonus, a little bit of an extra, but in the long run this tank should end up in a folder with the M1A1. But you know, to be honest, um, the question is, do you like it? Do you enjoy top tier tanks? Do you enjoy top uh, night battles you know uh, do you enjoy the stock grind or spending so much money on getting the night vision device on um, the infrared and you know the thermal imaging whatever do you really like this then you have a different you know preference to the tanks that you choose than me but we all can agree that if there is something around that you can't do anything against then that is bitter and this tank actually gives you the hope to have a chance as a main battle tank. Very often I heard now the arguments, oh if you don't like this, you know with the helicopters, just play arcade. Oh just go down to lower battle ratings. But I think that, that, that this is not quite the option to be honest, because then that destroys a little bit of what makes War Thunder great for me these days. Don't get me wrong, arcade is great, especially to learn the ropes, especially to get used to the uh, lead indicator and to just get an idea of the different muscle velocities and scopes and so forth. So arcade is a great teacher, but perfection comes from first realistic and later than simulator. So far we got uh, 5 kills and uh, yeah, now I whiffed the shell, but thankfully the automatic was kind of distracted by some of my team's planes and now I finish him off for my sixth kill that is nice and now watch this at some point the KF50 came I miss him with the first shell and then I reload and yes I take a lot of ammunition with me he just stopped in mid-air you know it's so difficult to judge how an enemy plane or helicopter behaves but the next one finds its mark off with his tail I say and he's already dead, but do you trust a dead red helicopter? No. And so this was actually a pilot snipe, and that then was for me satisfying. But then there was also this. Look at this. I slow actually down, and that was so beautiful. Uh, it looked so perfect. And this proximity fuse just guarantees you a kill when you miss just by one or two meters, something like this. Whereas, you know, with a tank, you must make that shell work. SPAs in close quarters are better. Better elevation, better gun handling. But, you know, I think that's all that it takes. Let's have a quick look at the post-battle results. And that was the best battle that I could offer you when playing this tank for one day. 72,000 civil lines, nearly 8,000 vehicle research points. And look at those awards. Not just only the survivor and the heavy metal hero, but also the mission maker and that is where then all the civil line achievements make up a third of our total income and that was really nice so the question is did you like what you saw do you want more of those high tier battles where it's a halfway full battle halfway kill compilation or do you just prefer me talking you through the statistics and then ending up 
with just the gameplay. Anyways, that's it for me today. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, give this video a like if you did, subscribe if you want more, and as usual, we'll see each other on the ways, in the skies, and on the battlefields of War Thunder.